Good afternoon and welcome to Achimota B Oval, where the All African Games is ongoing. And this is Over B, and it's a big match day between Ghana and Uganda. It's match number eight. Earlier this afternoon, my colleague, the big man Innocent Indaula, was at the toss. Good afternoon from Accra, Ghana. We're here at the Achimota Complex, and this is match day number two. Game number eight of the 13th African Games as the men's cricket competition makes a ball at this quadrennial event. It is searing heat conditions here. Temperatures are spearing through the 30s. But with me here are the two captains, Brian Mark Masaba of Uganda and Mr. Obed Harvey of Ghana. The tournament and match referee is Mr. Owen Kirombe from Zimbabwe. Uganda are the home team, so Brian will flick the coin and Obed will call. Head is the call. Uganda have won the toss. Bran, what are you doing? I uh, will have a bat. You're having a bat first. What informs your decision? Yesterday we saw you bat first again, and again today you're going for the same decision. Look, uh, we, we back ourselves as a batting unit. Um, I thought the boys went well yesterday, and uh, they look to come out and do that again today. But, you know, also this kind of wicket can, on, can only get worse as the game progresses. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bat. Changes in the team? Yes. Um, um, Robinson Oboya comes in for Ronald Lutaya and uh, Juma Miyaji for Bilal Hassan. If it was said, and good luck to you in your match. You. Obed Harvey, no luck with you with the toss. What would you have done had you won the toss? Yeah, we would have gone into bat as well. Um, yeah. Tell us why you would love to have a bat first if you had won the toss. Yeah, I would just put some score on the board and put pressure on the field inside. Yeah. Well, you have to bowl. What score would you look to contain Uganda to? Yeah, we're looking at around 130, 140. Yeah, we still stay there. We'll be achievable. Tell us about yesterday. Tough game to play against South Africa. Yeah, okay. It's in the past. Uh, it's a tough one. So we just look forward to today. Any changes in that team that played yesterday? Yeah, we have two guys out. Uh, two coming in. Uh, Awala is out because of uh, shoulder. Uh, Nigo and uh, Akil is also out. So we have uh, Lee, one of the junior guys, coming in in place. And then Ala is also coming in. Thank you very much and good luck in your match, Mr. Obed. And the news coming out from the middle, it is Uganda that have won the toss and they will have elected to have a bat first. That's the story from the middle. Clearly, it's Ghana who are the home team and they will be looking to redeem themselves after losing massively against South Africa yesterday. And Uganda, who are on the riding seat, dominated that game. The East African debut, the biggest in Africa against Kenya. And that's the Ugandan side. Simon Sasezi, Roger Mukasa, Kenneth Waiswa, Dinesh Kumar, Alesh Siprop, Kakuru, Brian Mark Masaba will be leading the side. Cosmos Kewutia, Henry Seyendo, the spinner, Robin Obuya, and certainly Miyagi Juma. That's the team for Uganda for this important encounter. And Ghana lineup clearly will be led. Certainly, by no other person than their skipper, Obed Harvey. We have Richard Baleri, James Kweku Viva, the man who got the flyer but couldn't continue yesterday. Rexford Bakum, the vendor Malik Singh, Michael Aboya, Joseph Kwame Theodora. He's got some fine batting form. Godfrey Bakiwayem, Kofi Bagabina, Alex Ose, and Lee Inyako. That's the team for the Ghana lineup today. They will be looking to surprise the Ugandans. However, what more can you say with the big guns, the World Cup bound team, just fresh from India? It's Uganda who are looking the favorites from this group, but time will tell. All is set. And everyone is waiting. If you're just joining us, there's the All African Games. Now the African Games, the first time cricket is featuring since 1965. And it's the men's edition. Last week we saw Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Nigeria run away with gold, silver, and bronze medal, respectively. But today, it's been action. Yesterday we saw 140 boundaries. 38 sixes and 102 fours. The umpires will take the field. Clearly, Isaac Oyeko from uh, Kenya and Sarah from Zimbabwe.
plenty of experience. I mean, this team's Simon Sasezi. We call him the professor, the calm man. Didn't get going yesterday, but plenty of character in him. And Roger Mukasa, the man who set up the Ugandan innings against Kenya yesterday, will have to show grit and consistency here. Kofi Bagabina would begin proceedings here for Ghana. Some of the finest cricketers are here on this field today. They've been around long enough. Gofrid Bakawayim, a lively Ghanaian team we've got here. The start of business here on the mark is Roger Mukasa. Will he get a second? Yes. Cricket made easy here by the books. Kofi steaming in from the school end of this oval. The original grounds of Ghana Cricket Association. Coast pick this time. Get a ruler. Trust me. Roger Mukasa on the mark. Stand and deliver that one. And I will race through mid on for a boundary. Roger Mukasa. Plenty of power in that one. Brilliant bowling. Goes big this time, straight to the captain. At middle of run-out opportunity, misses it. Obed Harvey just fumbles that one a bit. And it's already more runs here. Seven already. That's a no ball and it's a free hit. And it's Simon who says he will, will get that privilege. It's the cream la cream of associate cricket in Africa in this tournament. Swing and misses inside edge. Unlucky Kofi. Now we'll race away. For another boundary, making this and indeed a big over for starters.
Couldn't get that one off the square. Uh, bringing the bowler into play. Another dot from that one. Uh, it's 12 already. And the last ball of the first over coming through from Kofi to Simon. Simon Sasezi always making things look calm and simple. And it's end of the first over. It's 12 for no loss. Bowl are coming from the golf club end of this over. It's Goffrey Bakuayem. One of the song bowlers for Ghana cricket. He's been around long enough, knows his business. Filled with potentials. Hopefully he delivers for Ghana today. But nothing is going to be easy here. And it's Roger that will be taking this delivery. It's runs flooring for Uganda. Roger ensuring to rotate strike. He's sensible and experienced cricketer. Simon Sassesi. Brilliant shot. Looking to find a gap. A brilliant piece of field in there. Another single. That one misses everything but the keeper. The needed dot ball. Goffred. He's got to work extremely hard to give Ghana some life today. They know it. They lost to South Africa. And they are here trying to redeem that image against Uganda. No ball it is. Clearly, disappointment from Godfrey. Afraid is the signal. Umpire Isaac. Some umpires are experienced enough. They've been around long enough. You go to watch your marks, bowlers. It's afraid. The skipper Obed have a wanting to know. No value from that one straight to the fielder at covers. Roger couldn't put that one away. A 
brilliant bowling by Gofford. Another dot ball. Roger still trying to get going. Eight of nine deliveries. And Simon on five of four. Last ball of the over. And that's the end of the second over. It's 15 for no loss. Kofi Bagabina back on the attack from the school end of this ground. And it's Simon who will be facing him. Beautiful shot through mid off. Fuda comes around that one, just a single. Professor again strolling through that one. One of the finest batters from Uganda. Did well enough in the qualifiers to get him through to the World Cup. We'll be watching them live representing Africa alongside Namibia, South Africa. We expected some rains, the clouds are hovering over, but hopefully it manages to blow over. Brilliant shot, great fielding, applause from around the boundary ropes, fans here supporting their home team Ghana. Against a walk up bound Ugandan squad. It's Kofi Gababina pumped up. It's flicked away. Kofi back in one aim. The fielder there just ensuring it's just a single. Brilliant shot, Grace, swiftly towards Longoff. He's having an easy day here, Simon. No need for the rush. Doing just fine. 6.35 power over presently. On the back foot, but straight to the field, a backward of point. Another good over for Ghana, just three from it. And it's 18 for no loss after the third over. Current run rate is six runs and over. Uganda quietly climbing.
His golf will continue from the golf club end. He will be looking to slow things down. Oh, there you go. It's bowling change. And it's Lee Inyako. Slower delivery. That one didn't come through. Starting with a dot. Beautiful shot. This time pierces the gap between cover and extra covers. The chase is on, but would go all the way. The much needed boundary. Simon Sasezi, the professor himself, who moves to 11 from a delivery after that shot. That's the delivery, just full, driving it on the up, through the covers. Just wasn't quick enough. And it's Uganda who will take that boundary. Another one this time pierces the mid on field. A quick one to the boundary. What a shot. The cream la cream by Simon. The quiet professor, the quiet surgeon goes about his business quietly. It's two boundaries in consecutive balls. And it's eight runs already from three deliveries. Yeah, you have the shot again, gracing through and going away from the mid on fielder. Big shot, or perhaps some bad on that one, a single from it. More runs here for Uganda, it's nine from that over already, two balls to spare. Not good news for cricket here, the clouds are hovering around. Hopefully, this allows some play. It's going to slow things down here. He goes big this time. Did he find a gap? The few that comes in from the dip is the captain. Run out opportunity. He made his ground quick enough. Roger Mukasa and Simon Sasezi. Brilliant running between wickets. Finding that big gap. The captain Obedave couldn't pick that one at a go. Umpire Isaac in a good position to make the right call. And that's the end of the fourth over. And it's 29 for no loss.
Kofi would continue bowling his third over. Looks to go big this time. Is a wide. Sarah. Confident about that one. Just getting confirmation from the scorer. Yes, it is. More wide Kofi contributing to those that tally. We still have to both six leg out deliveries. In the air, into the gap that will race all the way for the needed boundary is Simon. Hi, more runs for Uganda here. And to join me in the comms box, my dear friend, the man you heard at the middle earlier, the big old guy from East Africa. We share so many things. His innocent Ndaula, the full out delivery, flipped away of his part towards mid wicket region for the much needed boundary. The two guys batting out there. The leading run scorers for Uganda in T20Is, Simon Cesar with 1,909 runs. You guys have a small simple name for him. The professor, as you see there, some raw runs being leaked by the Ghana fielders. Fielder steps out of the boundary it's four runs. That's a shocker. Nobody feels like that in the world. Disappointment. No awareness whatsoever. It's ten runs already from this over. Really, really disappointing here. Kofi Bagabina must be disappointed with the fielder. Here you go. Into the gaps. And the chase was on. He picked up. And he steps out. What was that for? Let the ball go. Match awareness. Shocking. It's a huge crowd hovering over here. I don't think Ghana want to share spoils with Uganda, and neither does Uganda want. But Uganda will make sure they have five overs in, and then they can pray that the rain will wo go away. Kofi Bakabena into his third over here. Simon Sesazi playing sensibly today. He was in a bit of a rush yesterday. The leading run scorer for Uganda, a man who will remember COVID for the rest of his life because as it had so many people over the world, his career got a renaissance. He worked so hard in the net, put his hand up, and he got back into the selection of the playing 11 for Uganda after years in the wilderness. The man you call the professor in Nigeria, Simon there, and Roger Mukasa, former captain most loved cricketer in Uganda, Roger. Getting to a thousand runs yesterday. He started today's match with a thousand and fifty-six runs. Two of them in Accra in that class. The other third player with a thousand runs. Not in the building, Riazat Alisha. He's got 1,212 runs. The true all-round of Uganda. And the man who has captained this side whenever Brad Mark Masawa is out. Three captains for the T20s Uganda does have. So no worries. Kenneth Waiswa, Brad Mark Masawa, and Riazat Alisha. Chance to run. Run very hard, very quickly. Roger Mukasa is electric between the wickets. He may be 34 years old, but he doesn't look any of it. Uganda get the 40 up. Sarah Dabanavena having some words with Kofi Bagabena about running through the middle of the strip. And it's end of the fifth over. It is 40 for no loss. And it's Uganda who is currently on eight runs per over. The fourth T20I. 
between both teams, and it's Uganda that have dominated the previous three. Hopefully the weather stays alive for us to have this game and get a result from it. But the winds hovering around clouds. It's Lee Nyako who continues from the golf club end. An expensive first over from him, 11 from it. Let's hope it ties things up for, you, for Ghana. Uganda keeping it very sensible now. They will know a thing or two about the conditions. When you play this game, it's not about the ground, but the springs most of the time. You've got to play the conditions. What are you playing at? Now Uganda know they don't need to lose a wicket. Because once you lose a wicket, the resources are less. And Duckworth Lewis and Stan Method will be very harsh on you. Roger Mukasa, happy to play the accumulator today. Simon Sesazi is the aggressor. Punched back down the ground. They wait to run. It's a new bowler in the park for the Black Stars, the home team. Lee Nyako is the new bowler. While I was away, I was happy to see a big crowd coming through for this one. A big crowd of the home fans. There is a little misfield there, but it's all good. The backup is good, and you can see that man in your frame, Obed Harvey, the maestro of this Ghana team, lanky fellow, the captain, plays some semi-professional cricket in the Nigerian leagues. He has a story to tell. He's living his second life, almost lost his life in South Africa. A brawl accident there for him. Brilliant shot. Another dot. The fielder at backward of point. Simon Attic doing well to stop that one. Kenya are playing South Africa and they are taking the game to the South Africans. Score is 97 for two there. Kenya batting. Hitting it straight to the side screen. It won't get to the boundary, but Simon is running back for the second. Home safe and dry. Roger Mukasa urging on the youngster, saying, come on, Simon. Let's work hard for the team. It's a left-right-hand combination at the top of the innings for Uganda. Who will be going to the World Cup? The big dance awaits. And they will be in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. There are the hunted here, Uganda. Everybody is saying, you're going to the World Cup. Show us what you can do. Of course, one team going to the World Cup already. Namibia, their feathers have been ruffled a bit. A battle of the Eagles, but it was the Super Eagles that flew high above the Rikielu Eagles. End of the sixth. The power play is done here at Achimota Complex. Over number B. Uganda have 45 without loss. It's Uganda sitting at 7.54 and over 44 from the power play. 45, I beg your pardon, from the six overs power play. All oh, stage is set, and they keep climbing, holding up and hoping the weather stays, the rain stays away. It is expected anytime soon. In the air, chance for a catch. You can safely, not enough but on it, and see how they're running hard. Roger Mukasa almost, <laughs> they are running out of gas to make it to the fuel station. He's home safe and dry. In the end, a reprieve for the 
the Ugandan dugout, the O's and R's in the Ghana camp. Perhaps Kofi, the first bowler to be bowling four over straight. That's a shot for you again. He goes big. Stayed in the air for a bit, but landed safely. Throw wasn't good enough for Kofi to want that one. But show continues here. So Sase, the professor, will get a single. Glides through mid-wicket. Captain Obed Harvey coming into play. Left, right, and combination. More troubles for Ghana. They will have to break this partnership if they want anything from this game. Crowd gets a little heavier for my liking. Bagabena to Roger Mukasa. Hard hands on that one. He takes off the bottom hand just in time to make sure it doesn't carry it. Obed Harvey, the man in your frame there, hovering in the covers. Tall man can throw his body all over the park. Roger Mukasa stepping down the wicket. He'll get the boundary Uganda desires. He's been itching to get his boundary column going. He got the 50 yesterday. He knows in this tournament, it's a good chance for him to show what he's been learning when Uganda did tour. Sri Lanka, they were in Gal. At the National Test Stadium. And then they were at the ICC Omtex, ICWC Omtex Institute. Roger Mukasa going again. Mid-wicket region, does it race away again? It's a half-hearted pull, but it will be four. It's another magic win boundary there. Because a couple of sponsors coming through for the big do here, the big dance for the African Games. The men's competition making a debut. And what a time. It's been a long time coming. But thanks to the International Olympic Committee, giving a nod to cricket as an Olympic sport now. You always see that shot again, half-hearted, but we race away because the few that came around pretty late. It's Kofi Bagabina. Brilliant Roger. shot this time through mid on. Will come for a couple. Simon wanting it. Unbelievable. The field are making a mess of that one. It's Godfrey Bakit Wayne, who is the culprit on this occasion. Three consecutive boundaries. And guess what? In that four, you must give credit to the man who never hit the ball. Simon Tesazi at the non strikers end because he pushed Roger for the second. The fielder watching the batters instead of concentrating to collect the ball and chip in a throw. Instead, it's a comedy of errors. Fumbles in the park. They give her a boundary. And it's end of the seventh over. It's 60 for no loss. Current run rate, 8.57. It's Ghana who are still trying to find that break. But it's been runs and runs and runs. Innocent, the strategy here. We must talk about it. Bullers are conceding and they're kept on. It's Kofi who have gone for 41 from four overs. Kofi Bagabena. Sounds like one of those historic sites that we did study in West African history back in the day. The slave trade that did happen on the Gold Coast in Bagabena. I did get my distinctions in history. And I don't know how you fared. You are a West African. I did a bit of history. And there's a big story around that one. And that's why, for me, it was precious to have visited the Kwame Nkrumah site. Uh, yeah. You're talking about the library or the mausoleum? The museum. <laughs> he goes big this time. Oh, my word. What a shot. Just kneels onto that one. We call him the professor. Clearly making a statement here. I'm not going to hang around without making you pay. It's rich man who suffers this time. The first one will go all the way. It's actually a bounce for. Richmond Baleri, new in the attack. He bowls one way down on the fourth stamp on the leg side. He's given the rightful punishment. Simon says as he gets boundary and then tickles. He's milking the spinners here. 
And they run two again. Six runs in the over. You can see Roger Mukasa looking around to see any laps of concentration in the field. And he will be off to run for another. Uganda moving at nine runs every over. They are in good zones, good times. Some work to do for the Black Stars, the home team. Ah, very good delivery there. Simon will let it go. He won't like to throw his, his butt at everything. He's already gotten six in the over. Why the Ricks controlled aggression? Just what is required by Ugandan batters. This time comes back. I want pummel that one through cover region. Fielder in the dip. Ensuring it will just be one. This time it's Roger Mukasa who's on strike. On 24 from 22 deliveries. And Simon soaring away. 37 of 25. Roger Mukasa playing catch up there with his strawing rate. 24 from 22. He was lacking lower below the 100 percent strike rate. And you know, T20 cricket is about strike rate. If your strike rate is poor, it's poor. Roger Mukasa trying to carry the cover of this one. Instead, he spills it, holds on to it. It was there for the taking. If you take, don't take catches like this one, you ruin a missed chance because Roger Mukasa is playing into your hands. You don't want to give players like Roger a second chance. Because it will make them pay. This is the chance again. It is a skyer. Oh no. Feel sorry for the fielder there. He tumbled and rolled over. Godfrey back UAM. Richmond Baller is over. Has had everything. Simon goes. Another chance for a catch. It won't carry. It's the end of the over, bought by Mr. Richmond Baleri, who very well know can't bat. He goes for nine runs, and the score is 69 for no loss. The so bowling change this time. The captain himself, Obed Harvey, will give himself a chance from the school end of this oval just to find that break. The required one, 68 runs partnership. From the 68, 63 of the bat and five extras. He strips it straight away. Will he get to the ropes? Should that comes around? Yes. Another boundary. Simon the professor. Races to 43 of 28 deliveries. Showing the supremacy here. Almost chipped that one onto his thumbs. Simon. He knows how important every innings to him. Nervous 50s, they say, perhaps. But the professor shot and cuts away. If you'd have come from the dip, would they get a second? Slop if you didn't hear. Ghana really making a mess of this one. And they will get three runs from that. It's seven runs already from two deliveries. That man with Jesse number 20, Lee Inyako. On strike is Roger facing Obed for the first time. Roger goes full face, straight to the man at the boundary. 
Roger Mukasa signaling to Simon Sessa as he watch the misfield, watch the laps in concentration. We must wake them up every time they go to bed. You can say that again, innocent. Is Uganda having a field day here? Four dot three and a single. Simon. Simon goes. Does it sail all the way for six? It's a beautiful six as indicated there by Sarah Damba Nevana, the umpire from Zimbabwe. Big over there. Punishment being meted out to Obed Harvey. That's the ball again. He kneels on that one. Finds the trees around the deep, mid, deep square lake region. It's 13 already from that over. 14. I beg your pardon. There's still a ball left to come. Still a ball left to come, like you say. They can tell you that. It's 50 up for Simon Sesazi. 52 from 31 deliveries. Who oh, again have fine cuts that one. For four. Licking runs, Obed Harvey, Mr. Captain Fantastic for Ghana. Not his day today with the ball. He will want to walk around and forget this opening over his board. The over has been very, very costly. It cost a fortune, an arm and a leg. 18 runs in that one. 87 without loss. After nine overs, Uganda are costing. Slow ball as the Ghanians. Because Simon says, as a 27 year old, as Roger Mukasa hits this one over the top, chance to run for two. They will take one because the fielding is much better now. And the pickup is even better. Some hands there. Round of applause from the fans watching. They say, Very well done. We need to see more fight from you guys. Just like this. Rickmond Baleri, the bowler. Simon Sesazi scoring his 15th half century in T20 years today. He's got a century as well. Well, I'll tell you, Innocent, he looks it today. Might be the second one for him. He's in a good notch. He's got 10 of us left to play. He must stay there. He must show willingness to grind. Valeri making it tougher for him to score by taking place off the ball. That was a brilliant shot of the back foot. Rocks back and hit that one through mid-off. Showing real quality here, Simon. The way he's dominated this innings, not sticking around, not allowing the spinners dominate. Just ensuring that one boundary keeps coming. Roger goes big. The ball is in the air. Do they want it? Kofi Bagabina comes around it, but just drops short of him. Ghana needs to perhaps show more intent here. If not, then we'll be toiling the whole time. Very hard between the weakest, the two Ugandans. They scramble through for a quick single there, showing the athleticism. And Uganda moving to the 90s. 91 now. Should there truly be a cooling break for this one? The weather has been cool and calm, windy. <laughs> We just have to try and go through this quickly. <laughs> the best weather you'll ever want to see. Problem is the two teams starting to think about the rains. Richmond Baleri finishes the second over there. He's bowling very well. The pick of the bowlers thus far. Unfortunately, he has no wicket to his name. 
It's two overs have gone for 13. There is a cooling break here at the halfway stage of the first innings. 91 for no loss in 10 overs, Uganda. Who won the toss and elected to bat? Welcome back to business. This time it is Godfrey who comes back to the attack. And he will be bowling the first delivery after the cooling break to Simon Sassesi, the professor himself. And we are into the last 10 overs. Misses that one. Godfrey. He knows how expensive that could become. Inside edge there. It's Godfrey into his second over. Inside it, more runs, missed that run out opportunity. Experience Godfrey making sure the Ugandans don't just run away.
Uganda would like to move quickly on this one. Hopefully, we get a game from here before the rain comes down. He goes big this time in the gap in the air. And that will go for one bounce for more runs here to Simon. This time it's Godfrey who's been punished. And that was happen when you give a chance. You get punished for it more often than not. Gracing that one through me off. We'll get a single, a sensible batting here by Simon. Seven already from that over. The last delivery to come. He goes big, Roger Mukasa. Straight to the fielder, Rexford Bakum. And it's end of the 11th over. It is 99 for no loss. Run rate currently at 9 per over. Uganda dominating things here. He goes big. The big man, Roger, couldn't stick around any longer without establishing himself into the trees straight up. And his rich man would suffer this. Roger Mukasa here, tempting to hit it into the heavens. Get six runs. They must fetch and collect and bring back into play. Roger Mukasa trying to go back for the second as Uganda reached the three coveted figures for no loss. 100 is up. Simon looking solid. He will continue. 64 of 38. Brilliant shot this time. Bakum Rexford chases down. Good teamwork. Kofi Bagabine coming to the rescue. It's been a six, a single, and a double. Nine from it already with three balls to spare. It's just been runs galore. Here at the Achimota B cricket over. He goes big. Fuda comes around there at mid wicket. Just a single from that one. It's bought very well, Richmond Baleri, under the circumstances. He's not giving them in their zones to play. They must sweep, and they're stretching so hard to sweep. 
Back there in the frame, Uganda Cricket Association chairman in the frame, momentarily there, alongside the CEO, Mr. John Walusimbi, the new CEO for Uganda Cricket. They've had a couple of meetings here with the ICC Africa officials, of course, all of the three of them here, Patricia Kambarami, Justin Linjalinji, and uh, Kuben Pile. He goes big this time, but he's in the air. The captain himself, the call was no. What confusion could that be? The captain was under it, and the keeper ran straight at him. Eventually, both of them, no one going for it. That disappointing look by Obed Harvey. Look at this again and you wonder what was happening. And I tell you, you won't be blaming the skipper here because such a skier, it's always left for the keeper because he's wearing the gloves. I don't know what the communication was between the two, but they look like they're totally on different networks. Simon Cesar is getting a reprieve. Roger Mukasa got his own. Simon says has hit that and stayed kneeling down in his crease. He could have run three before they collected it, but they only get one. 111. The score is Nelson for no loss after 12 overs. There's more spin here to come. It's Alex Osei. It's looking like more nails on the coffee. It's eight overs left from this. It's Ghana who are looking dejected here on the field. We'll drop this to once each. And it's Simon, 68 of 41. And Roger Mokasa, 38 of 33. We're still batting for Uganda. Ghana have played into Uganda's hands. They're asking Uganda to take them to the cleaners. And I tell you, Uganda will engage second gear if Roger Mukasa's machine and Simon Mukasa's and Simon Cesar's machine have run out of gas. They will get out and some new guys will come through and they will take them to the cleaners if that's what they want. Michael and Nefi Abowaje, I beg your pardon, not a nephi. Bowling some leggies. Simon goes downtown. Chance for six. Oh no, he parries it out of the park. The horror fielding show continues here. We nope. are living in a world where it is full of comedy and full of errors, and it's not funny. Innocent, that was a massive hit. Bagabina could no way. Could only try. That's the hit again. Half tracker. And he goes big. Camera does well enough to find the feeder. There you have it. His foot were already on the boundary. And this time. Another one. <laughs> Sesazi cuts loose. Simon on fire. He's run right here. The Achimota over B. Two consecutive sixes. Simon Sassesi, the professor, everything just going good for him. Trust me, plenty of positive approaches here. Another half tracker, news on that one. This time, the fielder gets no chance. I tell you, he's silenced the crowd here. But you must look back to the feeble and the butterfingers in the field that have given Uganda reprieves here. Simon Cesar moves into the 80s. Now on 81 from 45. Is it the hovering cloud? Dark cloud here. Not the best of light. Do you concur or you disagree? Mr. Endurance of him, you're the West African. You know this weather very well. <laughs> well, we've seen many of these ones. But as far as we are concerned, it could hold up like this for another one hour, giving us a game. 
It's Roger Mukasa this time. He goes big. Booming drive. Fuda comes around that one. Does well. Rexford vacuum. Still putting in the body on the line for his team. You can see some Ghana boys, big boys in the building there, supporting their team. They demand a big performance from the home team. You don't want to be a mere host. You want to be competitive at home. Simon says as he goes again, this is even bigger. Almost uh, peppering the vendors there and the parking yard. What a shot that was. Innocent. What a shot. That's the professor. 18, 19, 20 runs from that over. And that's the end of the 10th over. There yeah, you have it again. This time, Fuller one goes all the way and into the trees. The cameras will have to find that one. 131 for no loss. It's the end of the 13th over. And it's Uganda still dominating proceedings. Simon Sesese, 87 from 46. And Roger Mukasa. 39 of 34. I'll tell you a small story, but I won't tell you just about now. Roger Mukasa going across the line. He's looking to get the boundaries. He's struggled to get them. They're running very hard between the wickets. Only the weather gods will save Ghana from this pounding. The carnage is on. Some lasty blows from the Ugandan batters with a lot of firepower in their tank and more to come. Richmond Baleri, the peak of the bowling with his final over. Mukasa getting to 40s, 41 now. They're going for it, the Ugandans. They're going for it. And they'll try to score as many as they can. Scoring at 10 per over. I am about to tell you a small story now that Simon says has his on strike. I don't know if you can guess what story I can tell you. Give them a hint. Well, he pushes that one down the wicket. We'll get a single. Controlled aggression. Brilliant cricket here by Simon. One would have thought he'll keep going big, but he's pacing himself nicely. It's 88 of 47 deliveries from him. Do you want to give the people a hint about what I was going to say about Simon? Roger Mukasa going very big, very clean, very smart. Go fetch that from the side screen. Roger Mukasa, that six, moves him to 48 now. From 37, it will be a tournament made in heaven for Roger Mukasa. Back-to-back -back 50s, if he gets those two runs, but first he must get them. Brilliant shot. Hitting that one over. And just hitting the side screen in front of him. He's 10 from that over already. Two balls yet to come. Roger goes again. Does he get the mid of that? Or does it carry? Yes. It is the half century up. The man nicknamed Papa because he is a leader in this team gets to 50 second back to back half century for Roger Mukasa Galiwango. You can see the smile on his face. He says, I am happy to be in Accra. What a ground. What a memory for him. He's really having fun here. Trust me. He's enjoying the moments. And his Richmond Ballery was taking the bashing. This time, rocks back. They want a second one, and they will get it. Brilliant run in between himself and Simon. Uh, much needed, more runs here. And that brings us to the end of the 14th over. The score currently is on 149 for no loss. And it's 10.64 run rates.
Kenya getting to 141 for six across the road. Mukasa. What a tournament it's been for him since he started playing for Uganda back in 2007, getting only his fourth T20I career half century yesterday. And today he makes them five career half centuries. Simon says, as he makes them 15, the professor, like you want to call him. Simon says, as he's hitting this one through the gap, down the ground, they'll get one. You can see how Uganda batting. They're batting in pairs. It's not a one-man show. Simon says as he lit up the, the Ghanaian bowling, and now he's handed over the responsibility to Roger Mukasa. He says, hey, mate, play catch-up. Because Roger Mukasa was lacking in the 30s, but now he's moved to 56 from 39, and Simon is dealing in singles, and Roger Mukasa with the stronger. Brilliant partnership here. 150 up. 150 up. Record partnership in the tournament. Cheeky from Roger Mukasa. Big, big appeal from Godfred Bakiwayem, the Rasta man with the dreadlocks. Dread like a Rasta? I know you're in love of reggae, Andy. Yeah, well, you can say that again. Yes. The dreadlock man. But if there was He's any had a few days, trust me. But if there was any music playing on the park, it's not Ghana dancing, it's the Ugandans. I agree with you. As the African sang. Crowd is watching. Tanzania watching this one. Roger Mukasa goes straight full to the side screen. Nobody will stop that. Andy, my friend here, loves to say, you can bring a lula and measure that one straight and clean as they come. Straight from the test book, I'll tell you what. And when you see batters doing this, you must come watch because this is good cricket. Trust me. Brilliant show here by the Ugandan batters. 154 runs partnership. This will be a record, African Games record. Yesterday, we saw 140 boundaries. Did we have a count for today? Mukasa not happy with the last shot he played because he threw his hands at it. He should have stepped in the line of the ball, maybe. Roger Mukasa, the two guys playing here, each with a brother in the playing 11 today. Roger Mukasa has Frank Nsubuga in the 14, and Simon Cesar has Henry Senyon in the 14, and both with brothers that have played for the team before. Of course, uh, Simon Cesar has Ronald Semander, who is now a professor, a lecturer somewhere. No wonder the Nigerians call him a professor. I don't know if they knew about Ronald Semander. Well. And then uh, Roger Mukasa with Lawrence Sematimba, who was here in town last week, the bigger brother to him. Coaching the Victoria Pals is a family affair in Achimota for Uganda. One of the best bowlers for Ghana today, Goffred has been consistent, but hey, ensuring it doesn't go for a, for a couple. And I'll tell you what, you can't take anything away from this Ugandan side. He goes big. But on the ground, Fuda comes around that one. Good work. Simon running very quickly there. Happy to let Roger Mukasa hook the strike. It's the end of 15 overs. Uganda moving at 10 and a half per over. 156 for no loss. Richmond Gallery, the one who's considered the most today, 43 from his four overs. Kofi Bagabina, 41 from four overs. Godfrey Bakiwayem, 18 from three. And Obed Harvey, the skipper himself, 18 from one. And Michael Agboye, 20 from one. Of all toyed for Ghana. And let's hope that somebody can come at the end here and pick a wicket, but that's not happening now. 
is Simon Sassizi on 89 of 48 deliveries and Roger Mukasa 62 of 44. Simon Sassizi goes uh, mid wicket region, running very hard. They'll get one. Simon will move into the 90s. What interests me there is a strike rate 185 for Simon and 140 for Roger Mukasa. This is what you want your opening batters to be like when it comes to checking strike rates. Cut, cut very well. Uh, piercing it uh, through the covers. They're running for the second chance for the run out. Mr. Obed Harvey, the man charged with the responsibility to complete the run out, doesn't. Hitting it down the line. They will take one. Rotating the strike when they don't get the big ones. The biggest partnership in the tournament here between the tournament openers of Uganda, Simon Sessas and Roger Mukasa. Roger Mukasa saying he's happy to play with his young brother. Clean bold. Simon Sessas is bold by that man, Obed Harvey, when he is one run away from reaching 2,000 career runs in T20Is. A rush of blood. 10 runs away from a century, 90 for him now. Disappointed man, but you must take a walk. And it's Obed Harvey, the captain, who strikes. Such big moments don't come easy when you have them. You need to take them. 90 of 49 deliveries, including nine fours and four sixes. It's Simon Tassese who departs. That's the delivery again. He opened up his wicket. Misses that one totally. And the next man to come in and find that rhythm is a danger man. The man of the match for yesterday's game. Dinesh Kumar Mangla. From one left hand to another, Uganda looking to continue stepping on the gas. It's a good offer from the skipper. There's a wicket in it that makes it even better, but it's only gone for four runs. With Uganda looking to get as many as they can in the last 4.2 overs. Simon says has his knock. Nine boundaries, four meter sixes. Most of those sixes hit to deep mid wicket. And he's played out 50 balls. Dinesh Nakrani leading edge, almost shaking hands with the bowler. Dinesh, a very hard hit of the ball. How I wish Prosper Hussein was here to watch a fellow left-hander. When you come in, you can't go straight away. Have a look. Have a look. Dinesh, have a look. Plays one. Turns around the corner. The second one tries to go. The shot is not on. And that's what happens. Roger Mukasa will tell him, yes, you don't have a lot of time, but can you start by hitting it hard on the ground? Because Dinesh loves to fly. He's a man who goes airborne at every opportunity he gets. It's end of the 16th over. It's 160 for one. The current run rate still on 10 per over. It's Dinesh who joins Ro Roger. Roger on 65 of 46. Can he steal the show? 24 balls to come. 24 balls to come. I don't know if Roger has it in him to think about scoring a big you today because right now he's on his highest score in t20 eyes roger mukasa galiwango on 65 from 46 slaps this one here past point but the search is dinesh it doesn't run quick between the weekends like simon so they will take one dinesh will take strike Thirty-two year old, eight hundred and thirteen T20 I runs. A high score of seventy-seven, an average of thirty. That's a good average. A strike rate of one thirty, not bad. 
He's got 250s in this uh, T20 I carry of his that is uh, as old as uh, 54 matches today. Getting off the mark is Dinesh with one through the covers. Rexford Bakum is the new bowler. The man you see bowling there, big boy. Lots of power behind that body. Bowling some medium paces. Again, hit down to the sweeper. Sweeper does very well. I'll tell you a small, sad, and beautiful story about Rexford back home. Yesterday against South Africa, when they were hit for 237, he suffered the most expensive spell ever in Ghana's history in T20Is, going for 52 in his four overs. But again, he was on the bright side of the history and records, coming up as the leading catcher for his team with 16 catches on the day. 16 catches in his career. So leading fielder for his team, but as well, he took over the unnecessary record of going for most runs. Taking over from Moses Senefi, who was hit for 42 earlier before this tournament in the World Cup qualifiers. Nakrani, it is Mukasa trying to pierce the gap. Fambo and Nakrani is back in a flash. Looks like he's warming up well, Nakrani. It's a good over from Rexford, who takes Uganda's run rate from 10 to 9.8. But there is still a ball to be bowled in the over. His over has gone for six. If he leaks a boundary here, he could as well have done as good as nothing in the over. Ah, he finishes it off well. Dot ball, a priceless one. The big boy delivering with the ball. It's end of the 17th over. And it's 166 for one. It's Simon Sasezewo departs. Departed earlier. Rexford Bakum. Bowling that 17th over. Last 18 delivery of this innings. is Roger Mokasa sitting on 69 of 49 deliveries. I beg your pardon of 50 deliveries. And Dinesh, two from four. Wicked time, back to back wickets there. Obed Harvey, the golden arm of the skipper, says no carnage. Stop it. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Two wickets for him in successive overs. A hero of yesterday, nothing to show with the bat. Nakrani, take a walk, sir. The wicket again for you. It's Obed Harvey. Nakrani playing across that one. And Obed Harvey bowling wicket to wicket there. You miss a hit. Now trust me, innocent, if you look at this bowling chart, you probably will wonder why some bowlers, Kofi Bagabina, will both four of us on the trot going for 41. And Godfrey Bakewain bowed that one over before being changed. Lee Inyako considered 15 from two. Richmond Baleri, four overs, 43. And Michael, 20 from his only over. Michael Abawaje, taken to the cleaners by Uganda's bowling, Uganda's batting. Robert Harvey, two wickets to his name, the left arm. Kenneth Weiswa is the new man in for Uganda. Running around to cut that one off. James Kwaku Vifa, you will see a lot of, with him, a lot of him with the bat up front. James.
Roger hitting it up in the air. Who wants that chance for a catch? And yes, the catch is taken. One brings another. James Kwame Theodore. Uganda losing wickets here in quick fashion. And the run rate is falling away. Two wickets in the over four. Obed Harvey is picked up the three thus far in the match. His first over hit very hard, but he's come back nicely, the captain. Disappointing Roger will be wondering why he didn't go straight. Certainly he knows it. Opportunity there for him. Obed Harvey is come back and board nicely from conceding 18 in his first over. He's managed to just concede another three, another five, as Roger. Bought six and went for 18. Now he's bought nine and only considered five with three wickets from those nine deliveries. On the mark, Robinson gets off the strike immediately. And it's end of the 18th over, 168 for three. The run rate, 9.3 per over. Robinson Obuya will have to walk with his vice captain, Kenneth Weiswa. This man, Kenneth, can hit the ball miles. Robinson Obuya playing his first game of the tournament. Comes in a little late. Normally plays one down, but he has got to come in at number five because Uganda sent the power hitters up front to hit the ball. They didn't get any runs. Rexford Bakum. To Obuya. He gets one. They must play sensible here at the back end of the innings and give themselves a simple target. Uganda was looking good for the 200 runs. Now the 200 looks like it is impossible unless the two cut loose. Rexford back home. Big boy. Big show. Looks like he's struggling there. But he knows there's plenty to still do for his team. Again, no connection from the Ugandans. They run very hard. It will only be one. What a spell at the back end of the innings. Uganda, at one stage, they were moving at 10 and a half per over. But now they must contend with nine per over. No late show from the Ugandans. It is Ghana that are fighting back and giving their fans something to find joy to. Obuya goes inside out over the top. One bounce to the roar. Four runs. Almost flew for six. That's the power of Obuya, a man who's playing his first match of the tournament. More, more runs there for Uganda. Move up to 174 for the loss of three wickets in 18.4. So Buya, the new one in the side, is playing his 16th match. 
but he's already got a half century to his name. 23 year old. He goes this time square of the wicket. Kenneth White is running very quickly. And there is a misfield. Fortune favors the brave. Uganda have put the fielders under pressure. And instead of collecting the ball, go back to the basics, Ghana. Go back to the basics. Field the ball fast before you look away and look at the batters that are running. If you try to go to throw the ball before you stop it, you're always going to concede more runs. They give Uganda a free boundary. It's Obuya that gets a fourth out of nothing. That's the chance again. And look at the misfield at the boundary ropes. Sprawling away and uh, conceding defeat in the end. Obuya goes up and above. Chance for a catch. Oh no! Godfred Bakiwayem catches air with the ball inside. And I tell you, there's a big row right behind us from the fans that are watching. And it's nothing good but insult to their own player. Three boundaries there for Bui at the back end. And they give Uganda a chance to think of the 200 again. Three misfields. And you see that man in your frame there, <laughs> Dinesh Nakrani, saying, how I have missed out today. How did this happen? Having chance to talk to Bilal Hassan. Bilal Hassan not playing today. Juma Miyagi is into the attack. There will be a pace battery from Uganda in the second innings with Cosmas and Juma coming through. A smart Ugandan side will probably look to bowl quick spinners. Six overs through just in case. Five overs just in case. The rain comes down. It's something that we hope to see how Uganda will think this through. But presently, we are into the last over. It's 182 for the loss of three wickets after 19. It's Uganda roaring and soaring at 9.58 and over. It's the captain, Obed Harvey, bowling his last over. Three for 24 from his three. Very good ball there. Kenneth White are playing completely the wrong line. He must know that the ball is turning away from him. This is the lefty bowling to you. You must think better. Just the five balls to go. Maybe give the strike to the strong Obuya because Obuya's miss hits could even go for six. Five balls left in this innings for Uganda. Who won the toss and elected to have a bat? Again, back to back. Dot balls. Kenneth Waiswa is the vice captain. He knows better. He must decide now should I give Obuya the one? Let's see what he thinks. He goes big. Does he tear the cover off the ball? That's what he was looking for. And he gets exactly that. Obed have a place into his hands because he leans back in the crease and puts power behind the shot. Innocent. This explains clearly what a swing is all about. The distance of that boundary. If we are taking measurement, perhaps maybe one or two meters from the center storm that one flew over deep mid wicket he goes big this time he's in the air chance for a catch and the new man will be on strike obed reigns in the battle between him and kenneth weiswa that's why i thought obia should have been given strike but obia won't be facing the new batter will be on strike obed have a wig four wickets the four wickets that uganda have lost all belong to that man obed harvey it's a good catch there, and the high fives all around the park there for James Vifa. This is the delivery again. Uh, toe end of the bat to eat. That was some real power, power swing. A six and a wicket. It's Ghana. Obed Harvey's captain will last last. 188 for four. Two deliveries to come from this innings. Alpesh Ravilal Ramjani, a contender for the ICC Men's Player of the Year 2023, that award taken by Sri Akuma Yadav of India, but he was among the four alongside Mark Chapman. He will go. It's all music here. 
No second guessing. The six runs for the man who was on the ICC men's T20 team of the year, 2023, for having picked up 55 wickets for Uganda and scored over 350 runs. Ramjani off the mark with a six. Last ball coming, 194. Uganda, six runs away from getting the coveted 200-run score. The look the part, it's Captain Obe. He goes big this time in the air. Chance for catch. Does he end with a fiver? Oh, yes. Five wickets for Obed Harvey. All the five wickets Uganda have lost today belong to that man, Obed Harvey. Uganda won't be minding so much about the number of wickets they've lost because they have runs on board. They finish on 194 for five. Obed Harvey with a rare five with his team under the pump. The catching wasn't good in the beginning, but the last five overs, they have fielded very, very well. The Ghana players, that's the catch there, the celebration from Lee Nyako. Tell you the last five overs have been good for Ghana. Uganda was 156 for no loss after 15, but they lost a wicket in each of the last five overs as they ended up on uh, 194 for five. Umpires will walk on and walk off there. Isaac Oyeko, the Kenyan umpire in your frame, they are having words with Sarah Damba Nevana of Zimbabwe. The sights out of here do show. Could be raining somewhere else and somebody is doing his thing for the rains here. As a batting card for you. Does it for us? It's Obed Harvey, the captain himself, after going for 18 in that first over, came back beautifully to take five for 36 from his four overs. The rest of the bowlers have suffered battering here, and the only one, Godfrey Bakewan, with a near decent economy rate, went for 18 from three overs. And it's Ghana 195 required from 20 overs at 9.75 per over. And trust me, the weather looking all dodgy and deceptive we're expecting rains but they haven't come and so what next well we'll wait and see highlights we'll watch and then we'll be back with the second innings
To the second innings and it's Ghana will be responding to this Maman total here 195 from 20 overs Richmond Balleri and James Viva will be opening the ball batting and as expected it's Alpesh that will open the bowling for Uganda they have to quickly get five overs through the wind Clearly, proceeding with start from the school end of this oval B, 194 and 195 to win Ghana. Saradamba Devana says play. Fast ball is beaten. All hands up. Richmond Baleri. Did ball very well, a little expensive there, but was uh, one of the bright prospects with the ball for Ghana. Second ball straight and full. Good protection there. Uganda bearing very wise. If you're to hit Alpesh, hit him straight down the ground, and there is protection. Only two fielders allowed out of the arc. Indy fast. Six overs. It's the power play time. James Kwaku Vifa started his innings yesterday like a house on fire. Chance for a catch, he's gone. Leading edge to the slips. Wicked time, Uganda strike gold. Kwaku FIFA, he won't be lighting up any house here. It's Uganda with the high fives. Tough moment for James Viva. He departs without scoring. That was a very powerful ball. Left arm round the wicket. That's it again. Just our one trying to nudge it, but it finds the outside edge. <laughs> Wasn't playing the full face on that one. Easiest of the chances. Safest pair of hands on the park from Roger Mokasa Galiwango. One for one. Uganda know all this won't count for anything. If they don't bowl five overs, can only have a result in five overs. Obed Harvey, the captain, was trolling at three. Alpesh Ravilla bows the last ball of this first over. And that's it. It's end of the first over. It's one for one. And it's Ghana 
trailing on one run per over from where they needed 10.21. It's 194 required from 19 overs. Captain Masaba knows what it means. He has to go through this quickly. The clouds are not really friendly. And this time he goes with Cosmos, the pace man. Richmond's versus Cosmos. Straight up off the pads. Just a single. Simon Sassese, the man who got 90. Kehuta Cosmos. The pace man. For Uganda. Cosmas Cheuta spent a year and a half out in the cold because of an injury. He's bowling some lively pace here. His pace did trouble the Kenyans yesterday up front. Managing to pick up there a wicket. Nel Mugabe trapped leg before wicket for zero by Cosmas' pace. And Uganda looking to use Cosmas sparingly because it's only on the comeback road. After some injury days, some time in the sick bay on the Masusi's table. Cut, cut very well. Chance for, chance to run. It's a good fine stop there from Henry Senyondo. Bearing his all, he will get a high five. A pat from uh, Kenneth Wise, where he says, you've done well for us, mate. All the runs night are runs made. And run saved forthwith. Cosmas Cheuta is bowling. He's bowling in his 21st match. He's picked up 23 wickets. So it means every time he's bowled, he's picked up a wicket. His best bowling figures are 4 for 5. Again. Unlucky. Four. Unlucky. So unlucky. Inside edge. That misses everyone. The keeper working really hard but couldn't get hold of that one. Uh, watching from here without looking at the stats, you will wonder what has happened. It's bowled beautifully, but that delivery, Obed Harvey surviving that one. Cosmas Cheuta had his hand on his head. He almost chopped it onto his uh, own furniture. Runs on board. Harvey on strike. Again, him trying to go for a flourishing drive. Square drive. No connection. Good to see Cosmos doing this for his country. The World Cup and the cards to be taken. The African Games medals to sort for. But I tell you, it's been clinical. He did it yesterday against Kenya. Let's hope he tightens things up here for Uganda. That line from Cosmos, beautiful stuff. It's the end over. The second over here, eight for one.
run out and the appeal is run out given Cyrus Kakuru and Brian Mark Masaba, the captain, work in tandem partnership to get rid of a, another wicket. It is Obed Harvey that will take marching orders, the captain. He lived dangerously on the brink in the previous over, and now he falls to a run out, hit straight to the fielder's hands. And the run out is completed by the duo over skipper. Brian Mark Masaba and Cyrus Nshekanabo Kakuru. Not a happy start for Ghana. And when you get those run outs, the more or less like giveaway. It's eight for two, and we are into the third over of this innings. Played with the edge there, the skipper will chase. Does it go there to the boundary? Good pickup. They'll get two runs. Rexford back home. Joining there, Richmond Baleri. Back home, off the mark with the pair. More dots. And that will finish that over. It's the end of the third over. 10 for 2. Ghana presently trailing on 3.3. .3. Run rate needing 10.8. 185 from 17 overs. Another two overs will guarantee the game. Should it rain. But at the moment, it's holding up. Wide delivery to start with Cosmos. Rexford Bakum and Richmond Ballery. Bakum with the hitting ability, but he's playing against a very experienced Ugandan side. He comes big, misses that one, charging down, but then just didn't present a shot perhaps. Ghana knows this. They need to fight here. It's 184 from 16.5 overs needed. And it's 11 for two. Two crucial wickets, Jim Viva and the captain, Obed Harvey. Down the leg side. Hit 
something, perhaps. No white from that delivery. It's Cosmos working hard to have a good and solid comeback here for Uganda. Run out opportunity. Did he hit? <laughs> Everything is going on the storms now. Rexford back home. Would be destabilized <laughs> if he walks from that one. Ugandans enjoying every moment from this. Is Kenneth Weiswa who always have the smile. <laughs> Big cheeky one. Don't leave your craze. As it again direct it on this one. Just in on time. <laughs> Rexford would have been walking. They will run hard that one. And it will be a wide two from it. Wasn't quick enough to trouble Rexford, who just drops his bat. <laughs> Cosmos was on Playboy yesterday. Would like to bowl his second over and get done with business. And coach, they are coming out to say he'll be used sparingly. This is over pitch, he overcompensates and he's punished for, for Ronaldo Tire there in your frame. And Franklin Suboga, 13th and 14th man today, doing the water duties will help fielders collect. It's a boundary here 17 for two after 3.5. The overcast conditions have remained the same. Someone whispering to me at the in his break that it is raining everywhere else, not here. Short. Almost taking the head off. Mr. Alpesh Ravila Ramjani, who takes cover. Over pitching Cosmos is punished. Big boy. Strong levers. Rexford Bakum hits that to the boundary. End of the second over. Cosmos two overs have gone for 17 now. End of the fourth, 21 for two. Hundred and seventy four needed by Ghana at just ten point eight eight per over. Uganda know they are one over away from a result. Full face and what a fine stop from Cosmas Cheuta. Tall man, six and a half feet, but he goes down and stops it. Could have been four anywhere else. And it was the bowling chain, Dinesh Kumar, who comes from the school end of the over, looking to just get that in road. But it's up against a solid Rexford. Playing sensibly now, Bakum. Half volley. Just gives it a full face. And that's the difference between the Ugandan batters. 
If you play such a beautiful shot and that was pitch up to you, you got to leave us. You got to back yourself up. It's 173 you're chasing at the moment. Those are runs. <laughs> Inside edge, he won't run there. Simon Sensazi, the man on the brink of a lot of history in this tournament. Everything is touched, is turned into gold today with the bat. 15th half century for Simon, and he fell short of one run of reaching 2,000 T20I career runs. Big shot over the top. Chance for a catch. Diving forward is Kenneth Weiswa. Does very well. Commitment from the Ugandans. Instead of giving away one, he says, how about I chip in a dive as well and make it a wicket? Help my bowler to find spring in his step. That's very good commitment from Kenneth. You want to see those kind of attitude around the game. And if you're a bowler, you'll be happy with your fielders if they give those commitments. Catch and go from the Ghana boys. They'll get the one. Cosmas was uh, hugging the 30 yard circle. This partnership looking to be that one Ghana needs. Richmond Balleri stuck around for some time, but still hovering around two after 10 delivery. It's Rexford who's moved to 11 from 10. Rexford back home, playing some good test cricket here. He will tell you, go. leaving the ball is a shorter well. 50 overs cricket. But that's the end of the fifth over, and it's 24 for two. Current run rate is 4.8. Required is 11.4. I can tell you across South Africa, 61 for 6. Chessinger, 141 for victory. All the big boys are going there. 10.12 is what South Africa need. Kenya set 141. Kenya going back to their old methods. Opening with the legend, Colin Zobuya, who got 58 from 47. Seven fours, two boundaries. And there were contributions from Raquel Patel, 28 from 25. Nelson Mandela Diambo 14 from 11 and 16 at the top from Neil Mugabe. And I tell you, the South African youngsters are falling over. 81 needed in eight. They will take a lot of batting for them to come out of that slow. Kenya will take the victory and stay in the hand because Kenya will be knowing if they beat Ghana on the last day of the round robin stage, they will be in the semi finals. South Africa and Uganda will be playing a thriller. Because South Africa will come guns blazing at Uganda, looking for victory. Here is Juma Miyagi for the first time in the tournament. Good pass from him. Bowling the final over of the power play. That's some speed. The batter is in trouble. Limping there. Most have hit him right in the middle of that one. Real, real speed here, Miyagi. Uganda letting a few things loose. Trying to hit him straighter. Good throw from Cosmas and good fielding, but they are taken off quickly and they get runs. Cosmas Jehuta there in your frame. Man nicknamed Choto. A fireplace. Not yet a wicket to his name today. He picked up one early yesterday. It's Juma. Another of those that missed the qualifier in Vinhook last year because of injury. Back into the side. He will look to continue doing well for the team. Two dots straight up. And a single from that over thus far. Three to come from it. There's three balls left and the power play overs. Is Ghana still trailing behind in that required run rate of 11.72? Presently on 4.5. That's one back home. And Richmond Baleri. 
don't know if they're working hard to play to get a total they will have something to talk about to as Ghana that yes we lost but we were defiant in defeat or they're playing time and saying we don't want to fall in a heap what would you if you're the coach of Ghana let me put you to task Andy what would you be telling the Ghana boys you know saying what should I tell my batters give me runs that's all I'd rather die fighting it looks to go big but couldn't get it off the square Innocent, this is T20 cricket. We're not playing 50 overs or test cricket. <laughs> Don't just hog the pitch. Get runs. That's the message for me to my team. I'd rather die trying than not try at all. Staying positive is key. Miyagi, four dot balls from five deliveries and a single. and block length. <laughs> we could keep our enjoying if you did uh, and Rex was just shocked. Shot forwards. It's end of the power play. Over number six is 25 for the loss of two wicket. Ghana still trailing with that required run rate at 4.1 per over. Now he's climbed to 12.14. 170 required from 14 overs. If you are interested in Duckworth, I can tell you that uh, for Ghana to win or for B to be anywhere close to winning, they must have 56 at the end of six overs to win. So Uganda still worlds apart. Thirty one runs ahead is Uganda. At this stage, the situation here is 12 runs every over is what they need. And as well, across at over number A, South Africa need 12 runs per over as well. Hit back to Senyondo. Please take the catch. Nobody's going to stop that for you. If you don't take the catch, it wasn't hit very hard. But Senyondo took cover. <laughs> Not really gunshots here. Small toy guns toying around. But Senyondo takes cover. Innocent. You would rather live to die another day. I'd rather live to die another day. That was a brilliant shot and power hitting from Rexford Bakum. I tell you. Henry didn't pick that on time. Yes, he was there for the take, but I don't think he expected it. And I would rather be alive to board the next one. He didn't ball very well yesterday, saying the bowling just the one over. He will look to do better today, Henry Senyondo. Against the Kenyans. Senyondo was put under pressure. Bowling just the one over for 11 runs. Taken on by Collins and Rakep. Playing the wrong line there, Rexford Bakum. Senyondo finishes uh, a very good over there for Uganda. He gives her five runs, 34 2 in seven. The national cranny has got words to share with Rexford Bakum. The national cranny always happy to. Have a chat with the batters. And I tell you, across the road, South Africa, 71 for 7. They need another 71 runs with three wickets in hand. We are happy to give you that update.
Whenever we can, if you're following this game and you're only on one stream, we're keeping an eye on both. Innocent, I tell you, victory for Kenya in that game will open up this group into a last and interesting final day of the group stages. It's Cosmos, sorry, Miyagi. This time to reach one Balleri, 9 of 16 deliveries. Rexford back home, 11 from 18 deliveries. The target is 195, and presently 165 required from 12.5 overs. Uganda will have to think through this one because with victory for Kenya on that side, net run rate might come into play on the last day. Those young South Africans will not tie without fighting. In the air, but safe. I tell you what, across the over, it's 71 for 8 in South Africa. Who are in all sorts of trouble. And here, Uganda dominating. This is what this tournament is all about. No team is a pushover. Nigeria taking one from Namibia earlier today. It tells you what. We will have an interesting last day. Zimbabwe dominating so far with a spirited new Nigerian side. Who knows? Anything could happen. Hopefully, it doesn't rain. So we watch. Interesting cricket. No ball, that is. A free hit, that will be Umpire Isaac. Yes, signaling free hit, front foot. Miyaji will have to come back again. 71 for 9. Kenya will be victorious unless a miracle of marginal proportions does happen. That game is going to be over in a, a jiffy. Miracles don't happen like that. I tell you, people will be wondering that is this the same South African team that scored 237 for two yesterday against Ghana? Yes, they are the same team. And I tell you what Kenya did. They did play around with the tactics. They read the conditions better. You look at Kenya's bowling card. And I tell you one small story because we don't have much to say about this game for now. But look at that bowling scorecard of Kenya. They brought in Gerard Mutoi, who's bowled. Two overs for nine runs for six runs and picked up a wicket. There is that youngster, Anav Patel, the under 19 boy who was the best bowler during the World Cup qualifiers in Abuja last year. He's picked up four wickets for 15 runs. The young leggy is that mystery alongside the experienced Shem Goche, whose four overs have gone for 18 and picked up two wickets. Kenya have worked the conditions right and they read the surface better, opting to bat fast when Collins Obuya was given back his rightful number to open the innings. He's the legend. He's the master blaster. He got them a 50 at the top from 47. And that's the difference. Innocent, those experiences will always be the difference. And that's the beauty of such tournaments we're seeing today. The African games, I'll tell you what, I want to see more cricket at this level. We want to see associates playing themselves in Africa, just like it's happening in Asia. And this is a big opportunity for these stars. Very well bought by young Juma Miyagi. Doesn't pick a wicket. Almost crushes the leg stump there. Pat on the back from Nakran who says continue working hard for us. All will be good. We know you love and thrive on wickets. You'll get them if you continue working hard. That was a good yoker. Just missing that leg stump. <laughs> Miyagi Balleri looks to go big but finds a few that fumbles it and they will scramble for a single Masaba the skipper of the side he is happy he says I've done the hard work and I will be leading this team to the World Cup unless injury sets in we don't pray for that it will never happen he's a fine young man intelligent and knows and understands this game. He's got a happy punch, a few captains around him. And he's doing well with his team. It's end of the eight over and it's 36 for two. He's Ghana Street trailing. Yes, Senyondo, elder brother to Simon Cesazi, who 
sparkled with the bat. Because the surfaces here are playing differently. Good fine stop there. South Africans will be living with themselves. They'll know they'll have to do it all over again when they play Uganda. They need 13.7 runs every over across the road. Here. Hit through the covers. Obia, the sweeper, collects well. They run for two. Chance for a run out. Big boy, Rexford Bakum makes ground. And he gets a round of applause from the dugout. That's the dugout of the Black Stars. Looking so stylish in their new playing kit. But style and poise will count for nothing if they can't pick up victories here. Hit in the air, finding the gap there. And I tell you, a small beautiful story. It's game set and match. South Africa lose by 70 runs to Kenya. A mammoth victory. And they've got that young man, the 18-year-old Anav Patel, on debut. He picks up five wickets. The records continue to tumble in this tournament. A South Africa of highs becomes a South Africa of lows. From 237 for two to 71 all out, not what the doctor ordered for. No one would have prescribed that. And here at this over, it's end of the ninth over, and it's 40 for two. The current run rate is 4.56. The required is climbed to 14, and it's 154 required from 11 overs. The weather still holding up, and Ghana are really, really trailing here. They need Rexford and Richmond Ballary to bat out of the blues and find something for Ghana. Dinesh Nakrani, given the ball. <clears throat> Bowling it across the batter, the left-hander. Not a chance. Will never be out there straying down the leg. Teenage will have to work extremely hard for a wicket here. <laughs> Things don't go your way every day. <laughs> Just having a chat with the umpire Isaac Yeko, patting him at the back. I go bowl the next one. Slower delivery, but we'll just nudge it for a single. Richmond happy to get off strike. Bringing Rexford back home. 18 of 30 deliveries. Richmond Baleri. It's Rexford back home, 13 of 20. Brilliant shot. Worry shot comes here down the wicket and will look to go over the most difficult region long off the fans happy here perhaps giving them something to smile at Rexford vacuum I don't know if this is the tactic being employed by Ghana 
Rexford Bakum to play longer innings, then he can explode later. Gets a good hit there out of the park, Rexford. Then gets a single. Nakrani is over. Gone for eight already. He must fight back to keep things in check. The last ball of the tenth over. Dinesh Kumar. Got a couple yesterday, but toiling here today. Just a single. Rexford Bakum wanting the strike. And that brings us to the end of the 10th over. It's 50 for 2. And it will be a cooling break. Action would continue here. Straight up, Henry. Single. 
quick fits there. Rexford Bakum. And needs to get going 20 of 32. We will expect some big hitting here from him. He's got the abilities. He's done it before for Ghana. And Jira will not forget him in Lagos. That's it. Big but in the air. Few that runs back. What a catch. That's it. And that's the end of Bakum. Brilliant catch by Dinesh Kumar. Disappointed in himself. He was there for the tech. But couldn't get it out of the inner ring. And it's another wicket. The third for Uganda. It's 51 for three. Group B of the games is alive. <laughs> South Africa lose to Kenya by 70 runs. And Group A equal alive after Nigeria beat Namibia by 70. That's the catch. Senyondo's wicked. Nakrani holding on to it like a hot potato or potato, whichever you want to call it. Look at Nakrani. Good anticipation. And the lame celebration from him. Devendra Malik in the covers Robinson Obuya Senyondo has played forever for this team one of the best slow bowlers in associate cricket and then he cleans up another Devendra Malik take a walk he does to no music the tune wasn't beating into his favor and well he didn't have the dancing shoes on. He will walk straight back to the dugout. Falls for a bronze duck. Call it a diamond duck because it's first two balls. Innocent we must give flowers to the wicket keeper. Very quick hands there. Gave the batter no chance whatsoever to even dream of coming back. Please go home. Don't try it. Clearly. What a beauty. A few wicket keepers would appreciate that one. Good hands from Cyrus Kakuru. He asks the vendor Malik, Hey, mate, don't look back. Just continue with your stroll back to the dugout. There's a fourth wicket for Uganda. Two from this. Henry is over. 51 for four. Ghana. Under the blades here. And now the ladder making them dance. Cosmos from the dip. He throws it hard at the wicket keeper. Day three of this tournament will be very interesting. You look at the run rates. And the net run rates of these matches so far, South Africa's net run rate falls from the highs of yesterday when they were cruising at 2.3. Now they are at 1.6. Kenya is minus 0 0.05. They will be looking to beat, ah, in the arc. And that is smoked out of the park. It will give some joy to the fans here. They need as many as those. And over in which Senyondo picks up two wickets. He tosses up one in the air. And Baleri's eyes light up and he smokes it out of the park. It's the end of 11 overs, 58 for four. Both bowlers and batsmen 
have shined brightly in this tournament. Lots of five wicket howls, lots of half centuries, lots of four wicket howls. George Van Harden, the South African, there who got 100 yesterday. Leading the run scorers at 129, Roger Mukasa in number two at 128, Simon Sessas in number three at 99. With the wickets, it is a uh, Lucas Nanderson watch with seven atop the Kenyan. And for the MVP, it's Roger Mukasa leading with 524 points. More runs here for Ghana. We're into the 12th over. Looking like we will go through these innings. And all the stories about rains. It's a much needed calm and cool weather. So I'm delighted to see that the King of England visit recently. Perhaps. Here is now Kroani into his third. Kakoro. Ghana won't be taking a second there. Throws coming in from everywhere. It tells you about something about these wickets. Over a thousand runs yesterday and today. We're having more runs. Another thousand runs in the tournament on day two. We are already in 2,000 runs thus far. How many more Ghana score here will tell us? Outside it finds it. That will race away. The dugout and the fans here applauding everything. And that's Ugandan. Still walking in the net. It shows the commitment and the consistency here. Unlucky Dinesh. Right there in your frame momentarily as that boundary was uh, scored. You could see right there, no chance for the chase. Fred Achelam, the reserve wicket keeper for Uganda, and Ronald Taya doing some work in the net. No moment to rest. Every opportunity you get, you've got to work on your skills. There's a new batter. Alex. Alex Osei. This game is funny. Another cricket teaches you to be humble. From the highs of scoring 237, South Africa can only get 70 today. On the same wicket they played on yesterday. He's running. Start to go back. 12 of us done. 16 runs per over is what gonna need. Any chance for victory here, endurance? You know it. You know how I call it. I don't see it happening. The top four batters would have been the ones to give Ghana a glimpse of hope. However, they've been left to go with just one man in that top order, Richmond Ballery, who is still struggling at 26 of 34 deliveries. Having lost four wickets is always going to be very, very difficult. We've seen 55 catches in this tournament thus far. And 650s. It's a good show here. We have 125 players who have been involved. Over 2,000 runs. And we're still on. And the last game of today. 64 sixes. And 162 fours. What a tournament. You're listening to the man with the stats. Endurance of him. Sounding very, very sharp. Every inch like the professor. Well done on the stats there. There's been a hundred from the captain of South Africa, George Van Harden. Only four bowlers have been able to get maidens. 
no hat tricks thus far. 19 players have been dismissed on zero, and there have been 55 catches taken as well. The bowlers have been generous, giving away 66 wides and uh, 22 no balls. That, that type of tournament. 2,050 runs and we're still counting how many more does Ghana want here? Easy take, easy pick what a soft dismissal is Alex who departs for 6 from 9 deliveries and in 65 for 5 Ghana in all sorts of trouble, the hope is lost can we say that? Alex Osei his job is done and dusted for the day. He will go to the games village, cool off, and enjoy the nicest at the University of Ghana. A beach is nearby, a bazaar like next door, and there's a lot of mingling and mixing. There's him there, the softest of dismissals. Alpesh Ramjani doesn't even celebrate, handshaking with the bowler. Number seven coming through and walks in at number seven, Mr. Michael Abowaje. Ramjani, four wickets yesterday, two today. He's bowled 2.4 overs. He's gone for just four runs. The man with the most wickets in the calendar year, 2023. 55 wickets to his name. He is looking to start up the year on a high here. Six wickets already in this tournament. And his last delivery of the 13th over. Brilliant line turning in is Michael Agboye. He can also bat, but not sure he can go as big as Ghana would want at the moment. It's end of the 13th over, 65 for 5. Run rate is on 5 runs. Required rate is 18.5. Look at that. 130 required from 7 overs. This is a real tall order for Ghana. And what do they look to do? Bat out the overs or try and enforce some runs. Even give them some hope and life. And that hope is lost, I would say, unless you get oh, one man to perform magic with a bat. Kenneth Waiswa, the vice captain of the Cricket Cranes, with the ball from the Achimota Golf Club end. He starts with one straight and full, and he gets the wicket. 65 for 5 becomes 65 for 6. Did you see the confidence of Waiswa? He didn't even have to look at the umpire. He was appealing knowing he's plumped. That's some confidence and control of the ball. A good knock from Richmond Baleri comes to an end. That's the dismissal, shuffling across the stamps. Kenneth Waiswa, confident appeal is rewarded. And yes, it's a good decision. Umpires always have the best angles. Stepping across the stamps. A wicket off his first ball. First wicket for Kenneth.
Kenneth Wise so two wickets in the tournament now. Chance to run. Running very hard. They want a second run. They won't get it. Under the conditions yesterday, Kenneth Wise were bowled very well. One for 18 in three. He comes up today, picks up a wicket on the first ball. One twenty nine, one thirty from six point five overs. This game looking like a dead robber, I would say. But Ghana need to pick themselves up, give it a bit of fight. Easy run out, will he hit? No. Captain Masaba smiling. To the sky on that one. Two runs from that over and a wicket. He knows it down the leg side. No ways. What is happening there? What is the appeal about? Joseph Kwame. Two singles from this over. With two balls to come. And we're into the 14th over. Sixty-seven for six. If you're just joining us, it's the African Games, and it's mark number eight. Here they are the Achimota Oval B. It's Uganda versus Ghana. Uganda setting the pace after winning the toss, one ninety-four. With Ghana one ninety-five to win. At the moment, it's sixty-seven for six. It's Kenneth Waiswa who tries to find that Ioka, but keeps drifting down the leg side. A tall order, end of the 14th over, and it's 67 for six. Run rate required now at 20.7 per over. Fourteen overs gone here. Sixty-eight for six. Twenty-one every over needed. You feel that this game done and dusted as a contest. Mere victory possession for Uganda, who will have two in two chance to collect and finish the run out. Isaac Oyeko, the Kenyan umpire, doesn't agree. Tables have turned. They say 
when an old man dies on the village, he doesn't die alone. They die in pairs. A funeral here, a funeral there. Namibia having their own. South Africa will have another later in the evening. On the unfortunate side of results. Oh, misses that one. <laughs> gone running to nowhere he will be hurting because he chipped in a big drive james kwame theodre sad sad miscommunication there simon says as he completing the run out james kwame where were you running to he gives uganda a wicket a team effort wicket and it's seven down a run out and it's Joseph Kwame Theodore Wood departs disappointed fall as he tried to make ground never in the frame easiest of decisions for <laughs> the umpire Godfred Bakiwayem walks in at number nine is wearing a huge smile on his face if you've just tuned in into the stream you could think it's Nigeria it's Ghana on the front foot here he, he gets a fist pump with the wicket keeper he says hi mate how, how is it here and he's uh, facing uh, Ramjani he can actually hit the ball miles i know that for sure we just want him to do that i'd rather die trying innocent yeah we need something to cheer everybody up here yeah, the nigerians are the Ghanaians are full here to watch and he's watching the left armor he's got a solid defensive technique Godfred back you are how long will he hold that for we're into the last ball of the 15th over everything uh, elastic heat of the ball does he wants to have a look then he can go is this the moment he goes no he no. wants to have a look <laughs> no is it called sent back by michael and that's the end of the 15th over is 70 for seven Seventy for seven. Juma Miyagi is back, not with a wicket today. Playing his first game of the tournament. Full and straight. Miyagi toiling and toiling. 
One half of Uganda's opening bowling pair with Cosmas Cheuta who bowled up front. Cosmas Cheuta. strikes he was itching ever close to his first wicket in the tournament and uh, the boy from Naguru playing his first match picks up a wicket because Naguru is a small suburb very many slum dwellers there how close is it to Kampala Naguru is a five minutes walk to Lugogo so it tells you the story he grew up in the neighborhood there watching and loving the game of course, he's a very good basketballer, Juma Miyagi, and the cricket authorities have had to fight him to stay from the basketball court because it was taking a toll on his back. Dude, give him a big contract and he will stay away. Make sure. Ah, but look at that deliver again. Super Shit. stuff. Bull's eye for Juma Miyagi there. And then timber for him. Beautiful places to be in Kampala. Not forgetting in Tinder. It's a nice... Nice lead to suburb. Got a few experiences there. Good people, welcoming, very welcoming people. You know, Saint Jimos tell people ar across the world about these places. And it's Miyagi again looking for that buckle, but no bat on it. They will get a couple, just a single from that one. Seventy-one for eight. A very strong commanding show from the Ugandans. They scripted a 72 run win yesterday. And now with Ghana on 72 for 8. Uganda are on the brink of another big victory. Again, click bang, bails up, they go flying. It's the bull's eye again for Juma Miyagi. The middle stamp is uprooted. Two weekends for Juma in the over. And Ghana, 72 for 9. Well, happy kid. It's perhaps some story for him. You're getting wicked and you can't get wicked. So leave basketball. Innocent, you must remind him. Uganda needs him here. It's timber for him. 72 for 9. After 15.5 overs. It's Ghana who are struggling and it's Lee. Nyako who departs. Last man for a proud hosting nation of this 13th African Games walks in there to bat. Lee Nyako is the last man. He will face the pace of Juma Miyagi, who's bowling one yoke after another. And I can tell you, Ghana are being taken out of their misery. The second innings, a no-show from them. The first innings was a Ugandan show with uh, some leaders and sparkles of brilliance from their captain, Obed Have, who picked up a fiver. Juma Miyagi trying to pierce it into the legs there. Miyagi will be happy with these figures. He's got one ball to go. He can wrap it up here for Uganda. Unfortunate for Ghana, things not happening their way. But it's the tail of the tape. Uganda been very, very dominant. And it's Miyagi wrapping it all up. Three wickets in his third over. Game set and match Uganda. Uganda with a big victory. A big hug for Juma Miyagi from Dinesh Kuman Nakrani. High fives all around the park. It's a job well, well done for Uganda who will take a deserved rest. They win by 121 runs. Number 22 in the world. Too much and a little too much for Ghana who are the lowest ranked nation here. And this is the final dismissal. The leg stamp goes cut wheeling. And it's high fives for Uganda. The home fans
nothing for them to smile about or even write about home. That is it. Juma with three to end it all. 73 all out for Ghana. It's the cricket cranes that are flying over the black stars. And this is the batting scorecard. Two players getting into the 20s. Hats off to Richmond Balleri for his 36 ball knock of 27. And Rexford Bakum, who stayed and held fort with 20 from 23. The rest of the guys, nothing. Uganda mean with the bowling. They give away only eight runs in extras. Let's look at the bowling scorecard here because 73 all out score for Ghana in 16 overs. And the bowling there, you can see Alpesh Ramjani started it all up with Cosmas Cheuta, who is being used sparingly in this tournament. His two overs went for 17, yes, but Ramjani two for six. Juma Miyagi, the peak of the bowling there, three for 10, cleaning up the tail. Henry Senyondo told for two for 18. And Kenneth Weiss, one for two in his one over. With the fielding, picking up the rest of the weakest there, a couple of runouts. I tell you, that's how things look like. Eight runs in extras. The summary of the match, it was Uganda that won the toss and batted first. And there was a big opening stand of 159 runs. The record stand between Roger Mokasa, who scored his fifth half century in his career, and Simon Sesazi, who fell for 90, one run short of 2,000 T20I career runs, and 10 runs short of his second T20I century. But that was his 15th half century. And look at this, four for 36 for Obed Harvey. And this is the points table. Uganda Omnius with a 4.83 of a net run rate, clean slate for them, two out of two. South Africa joined second with Kenya in Group A. They've got two points apiece, but it's South Africa on top because their net run rate is 1.6. Kenya play Ghana in the last match on Wednesday because we're taking a rest tomorrow. And look at that. They will have a lot to do. In the other group, Zimbabwe, two out of two. Tanzania and Nigeria tied on one apiece. Namibia have no victory. We'll take you to the highlights of this match as we wait. My mate, endurance of um, the prince from Nigeria to give us uh, the match presentation.
presentation. It's a big day. Day number two here at the African Games, and it's Uganda versus Ghana. Uganda won the toss and elected to bat, scoring 194 for the loss of five wickets in allotted 20 overs. And Ghana responded by scoring 73 runs all out. It's Uganda who wins by 121 runs. A round of applause for the uh, Ugandan team. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite the captain of the Ghanaian team. Skipper, hard luck today. I mean, two from two. What do you take from this tournament? A crucial moment for Ghana to see the African Games here. Yeah, um, it is one of those things, uh, like I keep saying. Uh, you win some, you lose some. It depends on how you lose. Um, we didn't really come to the party really well with the ball in hand at the same time with the bat. So it's just uh, unfortunate. That's all I can say. Those five crucial wickets, those five Ugandan wickets, you took them. Tell us how you feel about that. I know you've lost two games, but that's some positive to take. Uh, it, it's still a team sport. Congrats to all the guys. Kudos to all those two uh, who took the catches. And yeah, they did well. So that's what I want to say. It goes to the team. So well done to them. Hard luck. <laughs> Cheers, man. All the best. And I'd like to invite the captain of the winning side, Brian Mark Masaba. Skipper, congratulations. Big win today. What do you have to say? Say something to the fans back home. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, happy with the win. I, I thought the boys uh, came out here and, and got the performance in. They did what we needed to do. Uh, we knew, you know, with the way the group has gone, it might come down to net run rate. So it was important for us to, to win big. And uh, we did that very well today. 160 rounds partnership between your top orders. Records for this tournament. Yeah, you can't ask for better from, from your opening batsmen. Uh, I thought they took the responsibility today to score the runs for the team. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Simon fell short of a, of a well-deserved 100, but that's how it goes. Uh, he, he fell trying to, to do the job for the team. So, you know, we're happy with that as a team, and uh, we hope they continue uh, in that vein. Big one today. Kenya beat South Africa, and you'll be taking on South Africa in two days. What do you have to say about that one? Yeah, again, uh, you know, exciting times, like I said, for the group. You know, this is what you want in a tournament like this. Uh, it keeps it exciting. And, uh, you know, we'll just look to come and do the same things, uh, execute our process as well, and uh, hopefully we can get the result we want. All the best, Kip. Thank you. And before we present the Man of Player of the Match Award, we would like to give a special presentation to the man who's taken the five Ugandan wicket, five years. His name is Obed Harvey, five wicket for 36 runs in four overs. And we'll have the third umpire to make that presentation of the ball to him. Obed Harvey, please, this way. A round of applause. Thank you. And to help with the player of the match presentation, we'd like to call Mr. Frank Adu, ex-international for Ghana cricket. A round of applause for him. You're welcome, Mr. Adu. For the player of the match, we had three key contenders. Obed Harvey, five wickets for 36 runs and four overs. On today, Roger Mukasa, 69 of 51 balls. Well done, Roger, and a catch there. The man, player of the match today, the man who got to his 15th half century, 90 runs of 50 balls, is Simon Sasezi of Uganda. Thank you, sir. Simon, congratulations. Don't run away. We're gunning for you. 1,999 runs. You just missed out on that 2,000 mark today. I know you have many games to come. Take us through that 90 run of 51 de deliveries. Um, my, my plan was simple, just uh, play straight because I saw uh, the wickets are not really bouncy. So m my only plan was to play straight and yeah, I make sure I, I, I do the, the, the job for the team. 160 runs partnership with Roger Mukasa. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel very special because uh, yeah, this is now uh, the real the, the real guns now. You know, uh, me and Roger, yeah, it's the real the real deal. If if we click, then that means the team will also uh, be able to uh, to score. So yeah. I'll tell you what, I call you Professor of Batting because you keep your cool no matter what the situations are, and all the best going forward. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Well, and that is it from the post-match presentation. It's the end of day two. We will take a break tomorrow and come back for the big games on Wednesday. 